He's uh, got some colorful commentary at the press conferences, and, and a lot of our meetings are, are no different than that. Hey, there's three things I've never seen in, in, my, in my life. I've, I've never seen Bigfoot, I've never seen the Easter Bunny, and I've never seen a referee say he had a crap game. You know, so uh, I have seen Santa Claus. I actually met him in a bar in San Francisco, me and my brother Tony. Good dude, Santa. Likes his pops. Uh, so he can get uh, very excited. He can get very intense. Uh, I want to uh, tell you right now that uh, Penn State deserved, they, uh, they deserved a better outcome than that. They played, that was not a five to one game. We were awful. We were awful. It was a slop fest. And uh, they put pressure on us. They created chances. I've never had a team in 25 years play that badly and win by a five to one score. His talent is definitely public speaking, making people laugh. Uh, he finds some uh, pretty comical, pretty comical things to say. And, uh, and you can tell he enjoys uh, being in a crowd, being a, uh, he's, he's a good guy to be around. So uh, his ability to public speak is, is definitely some of the best I've seen. Head coach Frank Serratori may be known for his press conferences, but he's also the perfect fit for the Air Force Academy. In his 21 seasons in Colorado Springs, he has brought an enthusiasm and discipline to the job that fits seamlessly with military tradition. Around the base, it's known as the world according to Frank. I just have the certain ways I, I view things, and, and sometimes that's on, online with, uh, you know, uh, that's online with, uh, pu with, with, with public opinion. Sometimes it's not. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm a pretty black and white animal, and... Uh, Sometimes there's just certain approaches that I take towards certain things. This is the world according to Frank. This is how I see it. The best word to describe him is passionate. Uh, his passion drives this program. Uh, he's the heartbeat behind it. Uh, he's been the coach here for about 21 years, I think, and uh, he's really built this program up, and, and he, he just takes so much pride and, and passion in what we do every day. He cares about our team so much and us as individuals, and it really shows uh, through his everyday activities. and and what he does. So I'd say, uh, I'd say his passion is just unmatched, honestly, from any coach I've seen. And I really admire that, and I, I wouldn't have it any other way. The passion, it's, it's contagious. And uh, when you see how much he cares about everything, it's, it's pretty easy to jump on that train and, and follow along with him. Uh, so a very passionate, very caring guy, and a, and a very uh, colorful, kind of comedic guy at times as well. I'm a one set of rules guy. And uh, one thing about the academy here, um, all of our kids uh, are, are, are on the same scholarship. Um, I haven't had to make any deals with the devil to get any of our players. Any of the players that we get here, the only thing I guarantee them is, is a fair chance. Uh, I came from professional hockey where there's different players are, are making different salaries. I came even at Denver and, and North Dakota where different players were on different scholarships. Some were on full rides, some were walk-ons and everywhere in between. I haven't had to make any deals with any uh, uh, NHL GMs or family advisors uh, to be able to get players. So, you know, be, me being a kind of a one set of rules guy, um, it, it's just, it's really, it's really, really worked for me. When it comes to collegiate athletics, service academies are selling something special to prospective student athletes. It's not just a school with a degree. It's a commitment to serving your country after you graduate. For Serratori and his staff, the pitch is perfect it made in front of the right families. For us, it's a matter of finding the right, uh, the right athlete, the right student athlete, and finding the right family. And when you find the right player and you find the right family, you know they're going to see all the benefits that there are. I, you know, my daughter graduated from here, and uh, you know probably the biggest endorsement I have to the Air Force Academy. There's a lot of things dads will let their sons do that they ain't going to let their daughters do, and I let my daughter come here. Well, that was an easy choice. Growing up uh, as a little kid playing youth hockey in the area, I mean, I was a huge fan of uh, Denver hockey, DU, obviously growing up, CC, and then Air Force. So. Uh, getting to watch those guys. Those guys were my heroes growing up, and it was always my dream to come back and play college hockey. The pool is much, much smaller than the other colleges are dealing with. But for us, it's like the uh, movie Miracle. Herb Brooks said uh, in the movie Miracle was quote, Sam, I'm not necessarily looking for the best player. I'm looking for the right player. The type of kids that we get here, they're
they're type A kids. They want to get after it. They overachieve. These are overachievers. They overachieve in every facet of their of their life. Uh, you know, academically, militarily, uh, socially, athletic. These are kids that get after it. Just that's that's what they are by nature. And people ask me all the time, you know, how I inspire my players. And I got to be honest with you, my players inspire me. I always wanted to go to a school with great academics. That was a really big key for me. And obviously, good hockey. I went to juniors to try to play Division One hockey. Um, and then the military piece was, was an extra, uh, just an honor to be able to go serve your country. Uh, so for me, uh, the opportunity that all three of those provided uh, to play hockey at a high level, uh, serve my country, and get an excellent education uh, made it a no-brainer. Hockey is such a small part of the Air Force experience. They're learning to become military officers. They're enduring intense classroom sessions as they move toward a degree. They've gone through basic training, in most days, they are either at the rink or traveling for games. It's a student athlete experience like no other. A typical day, uh, we'll be up at about 6.30. Uh, out at 6.30, 6.45, you'll have a uniform inspection, or uh, right now we call it morning officer development. So uh, kind of have a, a talk with your flight. You'll go to breakfast. Classes will start at about 7.30 classes from 7.30 to 11.30. Uh, everybody forms up and marches to lunch, kind of a thing that we uh, do here uh, called noon meal formation. Uh, so we'll march to lunch. Lunch will start at about noon. Uh, we'll have uh, lunch for about 20, 30 minutes. Some guys will have one class after lunch, uh, 12.30 to 1.30, and then we'll start uh, hockey practice about three, three to six or so, go up, eat, do all your homework and then start the day all over again. Different, definitely for sure. Coming from two years of junior hockey where uh, your lifestyle is pretty relaxed and you, know, you pretty much only have hockey and that's it. Uh, coming here and having uh, intense hockey demands, military demands and academic demands on your time um, is, is definitely, uh, definitely tough to get used to, but uh, it forces you to really manage your time, have some sort of organizational system. Uh, each guy does it their own way, uh, but as long as you know uh, what you have coming up, uh, what your schedule's looking like, you know, what's due, uh, things you have to be at and go to and complete, um, you, can, you can be able to handle it pretty well. Yeah, it's incredibly hard. The time commitment is unbelievable, uh, obviously between uh, being a Division One athlete and uh, attending uh, school, that's, that's enough. And then you have the military aspect as well that adds to your plate. Uh, it's definitely quite, uh, quite the challenge. You definitely learn how to manage your time effectively and uh, learn uh, what needs to be done and prioritize kind of uh, the things that are most important, uh, find ways to get those done and uh, move forward from there. This is a very, very special place. And uh, if you're in Texas, people will tell you America's team is the Dallas Cowboys. Um, not here. You know, um, in my opinion, the Air Force Academy, we're America's team. You know, we represent, we have kids here from all over the country. We represent every state in the union. When we go on the road and play, we have, uh, we have retired military from all different branches that come to our games and, and cheer for us. And um, we truly are America's team.